Today I'll be taking a closer look at the Elite Engineering E2X Ultra Catch Can. Welcome everyone to the Derpzilla channel and for today I'm taking a closer look at the Tracy Lewis designed Elite Engineering E2X Ultra Catch Can. Elite Engineering offers their E2X series of catch cans with a few different variations and options. Of course, the version I have here on my workbench is the larger Ultra version with a capacity of 20 ounces and also for cars capable of 1,000 horsepower or more. And they offer their smaller regular version, which is just E2X, which I believe has a capacity of about 12 ounces and uh, for cars technically below 1,000 horsepower. Another option that you'll need to make while purchasing your Elite Engineering E2X catch can is if you want to go with a single exit or a dual exit, which is what I have here in my hand. And really for the single exit setup, they recommend it for NA vehicles, uh, cars that aren't, you know, tracked or raced or driven hard. Uh, and then for any vehicle that's, you know, boosted and you actually want to get onto the car frequently, track it or anything like that, or high horsepower setups, you're going to want to go with the dual exit setup like I have here. Advantages of running the dual exit over the single exit catch can is that you can maintain your proper crankcase evac. You can avoid pressure buildup in the crankcase and actually still stay compliant with emissions and often with some tracks, uh, some of the rules where you cannot have an open breather element catch can. I wanted to cover a few points on why you may or may not want to have a catch can on your vehicle. Now, of course, uh, you know, a big reason not to install an aftermarket catch can was uh, possibly your manufacturer may give you a hard time with any kind of warranty claims regarding your engine. This is an actual mod. They may see any modification and try to at least fight you, even if it's unrelated to anything that happens to your car. But, you know, any kind of possible issue, it could be, uh, you know, a potential sticking point and a reason you may not want to install this until after your warranty or if you don't care about uh, maintaining your your OEM warranty. Now for me, I actually installed this uh, catch can a few months after I purchased my car with only a few hundred miles on it because uh, my car is a 2021 Camaro ZL1, which is a direct injected LT4 motor. And with the direct injection, you get carbon buildup on your intake valves, you get them all gummed up. I mean, it may take, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 miles to really notice any kind of difference in possible minor loss in performance. I didn't want to get any kind of funky buildup. This helps minimize that. Now it's not going to eliminate it completely, but for me, any direct injection motor needs a good aftermarket catch can. The OEM one, they do say they have a catch can, but it's you know very minimal and it may not cover uh, you know all aspects of catching any kind of contaminants that might be going uh, to your intake and uh, what you're actually going to be breathing into your motor and burning. So for me, it was a definite benefit and why I would for a direct injected motor, especially always recommend a catch can if you're not worried about fighting about your warranty. Before I open up the E2X Ultra catch can, I wanted to uh, go over some of the features mentioned on the Elite Engineering website and just give you a rundown of everything they have listed. Real quick, they have number one, it's a large coalescing chamber using a corrosion resistant stainless steel and it's got 100% even dispersion through this media. You have two separate uh, condensing chambers with a primary and a collection chamber and that it actually uh, offers the most complete contact with the outer wall for cooling and separating any remaining suspended compounds that may get past the first two and then you have a completely separate outlet chamber and where the flow for the fourth time slows to allow any remaining droplets to fall from suspension allowing the cleanest vapors possible uh, to exit it's easy to drain using a high quality chrome plated brass quarter turn ball valve. And you can actually hook up a remote uh, tube to drain it from you know, below your car to the grill or whatever. And really, here we go. This is the drain valve. And this is the provided uh, hose barb fitting that allows you to hook your hose, your drain hose right here. Now we have a billet aluminum low crankcase pressure check valve and I actually have those installed in my car. We can take a look at those later. You have a um, universal billet clamp that allows most of any mounting configurations. I'll show you that, that's also in my engine bay. You have a billet 
6061T6 aluminum modular quality construction. That's what this thing is made out of. Super nice, durable. Uh, only negative I would say is the paint scheme is kind of, uh, you know, not the greatest. It's actually worn in a few spots for me and looks kind of ugly. But, you know, overall the construction itself is super nice and holding up great after three years of use. And uh, there's no mixing of incoming oil, uh, vapors, and, you know, from the clean separated outgoing flow at any time during the passage to the system. So you're not going to get any kind of mixture and contaminants coming out back into your engine. Uh, you have 100% closed, EPA compliant in all states, except for California, of course. Um, I guess they're pursuing CARB um, certification. I'm not sure the status of that, but it's, it's com completely compliant. It's uh, authorized for use on track and, uh, you know, other cases like that street. You shouldn't get any kind of issues running this versus an open element breather setup, which is definitely a, um, a, a huge advantage. And also you have these swiveling, swiveling, uh, connections here so it makes mounting your hoses and everything fitting everything up super easy and you can actually be you know run it any kind of mounting solution that you want that works for you uh, I'll show you my setup a little bit later now that we have got the technical mumbo jumbo out of the way I figured you probably want to see the inside of the catch can I did a full uh, you know I guess an installation overview video uh, I have it linked to the top of this video and in the description of actually when I installed it on my Camaro this isn't an installation video, but I wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, what the catch can looks like internally, what to expect, and also, you know, some of the things I've encountered running this catch can for, I believe it's about three years now, and, uh, and really why this catch can is on my workbench right now. I just want to get that out in the open right now. My issue was I went to change my oil, empty my catch can, which I usually do when I, ch when I change my oil, and I noticed that the catch can for the first time since emptying it numerous times had very little oil in the catch can and i had noticed a oily residue on the bottom of the catch can and down into my engine bay oil was all over the place um, it actually had leaked from my catch can for the first time ever from my it looked like my drain valve which is this little guy here i showed you here now this drain valve is typically installed at the bottom of your catch can when you receive it it has uh, you know, some kind of a plumbing tape or whatever they use. And then you have your hose barb fitting. And then of course your tubing, you know, whatever kind of tubing you have runs through the hose barb. And then you can actually, uh, you, you open up the valve when you want to drain it. You close the valve when you don't want it to uh, you know, leak out and you can collect oil until your next oil change, drain it into a cup or a can or whatever. And then you can continue on your way. The valve was closed, but somehow I couldn't tell if the oil is leaking from, you know, right here above the, the ball valve or if it leaked below it or what had failed, but it had definitely leaked out oil, made a huge mess and I needed to either replace the ball valve or, uh, you know, look into more uh, possible issues. I emailed Elite Engineering and they happily sent me a replacement setup, but before I re received my replacement, which is right here fully functioning you can see actually the ball valve open or close open but uh, they accidentally sent me the wrong bottom lid because I did say my bottom lid thread looked like it was kind of worn out from when I removed it and they accidentally sent me the wrong one they're sending me another one but the uh, ball valve is fully functional and good to go while messing with the original valve that I had on there I think I broke it and it no longer opens or closes and I actually ordered another one super durable one very nice uh, off of uh, Amazon. I'm probably going to run with this one. Um, I actually have a link in the description for this. And I also may run a uh, stainless hose barb setup for my drain valve. So I wanted to mention that I did have a leak three years in from my drain valve. I'm not sure if it just failed or if maybe I didn't crank it quite close or something got debris got caught in there, but it did leak, made a huge mess. That's why I have it on my workbench while I replace some components. But no more on that. We're going to go ahead and open this up. What you're going to need is, I believe, a 15 16 wrench. And you can actually wrench off the bottom, as you can see here. Super easy. Threads off. And then that's what we're looking at. This is what the bottom is. It's just a threaded cap with a hole drilled in and an O-ring. And then this is what the inside collection chamber for your oil. Of course, it sits in your car like this tons of space. You can hold a lot of oil. I mean, a full multiple track session without worrying about 
backing the oil back up into the, ingesting it back into your motor, which is uh, definitely not good. Now, if we move that out of the way, you can actually crack it uh, loose as well. I've already done that. Spin off the top separately. And this is what you have. It's just a uh, aluminum shell here. It's a cylinder, nothing super exciting. It's threaded on both ends. And then both items, the lid and the cap here are um, maintained, sealed with an O-ring. And then this is the uh, condensing chamber, which you have a chamber here that is, um, and then also you have your media element inside of this. Uh, looks like it's a spot welded or, or welded chamber. And then you have your exit, two exits. And then here is your input in the center right there. Just wanted to show you guys what that looks like. So this is what the inside Elite Engineering E2X catch can looks like. Customer service has been uh, fantastic. And uh, as I mentioned, they are gonna send me a replacement bottom because one of these threads was just kind of peeled up a little bit. You can't see it now because I actually popped it off, but it, I'm not sure if that causing any kind of issue. I don't think it will, but they were nice enough to say they were gonna send me another bottom cap. And uh, I had to clean up all of the uh, leftover um, tape or whatever it is, ceiling tape, plumber's tape. So that is what we're waiting for to put this thing back together and then install my new drain valve. Hopefully this one lasts another over three years and I don't have another leak. Because trust me, if you have a Camaro, uh, you know, be it a six gen, you have all the bottom a plastic shielding, plastic tray, and you have to disassemble a large chunk of your card underneath there to clean everything up. So it's a huge mess, total pain in the butt. No issues for three plus years until that small leak. So just giving you guys a heads up. But once again, aluminum tube, chambers, top chamber, condensing chamber, collection chamber in the bottom of the tube. Super simple looking, but definitely very effective. I've drained quite a lot of oil from this catch can over the years. I've only put about 11,000 miles on my car and I've drained uh, maybe 10 ounces of oil and acidic water and funk from this catch can. Over at the engine bay of my six gen Camaro ZL1 and my elite engineering catch can typically will sit inside of this stainless steel O mount or whatever this is. Uh, they provide this as well as a mounting bracket, hoses, and your uh, check valves, which is right here and here. And of course, uh, with the dual exit, one of the hoses uh, will run up here and one hose will run to your intake uh, tube. I actually have to drill that out and then you mount the included hose barb connection. Uh, that's all covered in my uh, installation overview video. Link should still be up here in the description. But uh, yeah, super versatile on where you can mount this. Most people, I believe, mount this uh, up here, but I have a supercharger uh, expansion tank there in that place. So I actually had to go with an alternate solution, which of course was here in front of my radiator, which I thought has been really, really good. Of course, if you don't sink your catch can really deep in here, uh, you may have some issues with your rain guards. Uh, if you have the ZL1, which my rain guards typically wouldn't install here, but they've been removed. I don't really drive the car in the rain, so it's not a big deal. But if you do, uh, you may have some issues with your hoses coming out the top of your catch can, which is what I experienced because I didn't want to sink it way down here because it makes uh, draining the catch can pretty difficult. So I actually like to lift it up a little bit, still clearing the hood, but giving you more access down here, open up the uh, drain valve and drain your um, you know, oil and contaminants into a bottle or something of that nature. So this is how I have it installed. Check out the install overview video if you want a more in-depth installation, the whole process, it's kind of a pain. So you do have to lift up your supercharged access, the, uh, your uh, PVC system and all that fun stuff. Now, as far how much oil I've drained, well, take a look at this. This is some of the oil I've drained over, uh, I would say about 6,000, 7,000 miles, maybe 8,000 miles. And as you can see, pretty decent amount. Uh, this is a 16.9 uh, ounce bottle. So I'm not sure how much that is, but you know, it's definitely stuff you don't wanna be burning and uh, covering all over your intake valves. 
that sums up the quick closer look internally of the Elite Engineering E2X catch can. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, found it useful, could actually see you know what you're gonna be getting when you order an Elite Engineering catch can. And uh, yeah, so that pretty much just sums everything up. Wanted to show you guys uh, everything because I had the catch can out of the car and I wanted to see exactly what was going on inside. And uh, so I figured maybe if I was interested, somebody else may be as well. I know there's probably some photos, maybe videos out there, but uh, you know it's always good to look yourself and maybe have another perspective that you guys might enjoy. Uh, if you guys actually like the ZL1 hat or the Hawk Tua t-shirt, I have a ton of merch on my website, zilla.com slash shop. Also my Etsy store, I have all the links in the description. Maybe they'll be floating around up here as well. Uh, if you guys did like the video, feel free to actually hit the like button, hit the little bell for notifications on upcoming videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Uh, feel free to share the channel with anybody else. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the uh, comment field below. I usually answer every single comment and question, uh, usually pretty quickly because I have a lot of free time because my day job, I sit on a computer all day and I'm just you know typing away and I get easily distracted with comments and your guys' suggestions and uh, questions. So uh, stay tuned for some more videos. I should have a uh, couple more videos coming out before I go on a short vacation and I uh, hope to see you guys on the next one. Anyways, peace. <laughs>